I appreciate you letting us uh, use this terrible experience to help other people. Um, you know, that's kind of uh, that's kind of something you've done forever. My life's an open book, right? Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. And today I'm joined by a personal friend of mine, Stuart Sloshman, who is the president of MS Views and News. Stuart, uh, thanks for jumping online with me. Would you mind just introducing yourselves for those folks listening that don't know you? So, like the doctor said, I am Stuart Schlossman, and I am uh, president and founder of MS Views and News. And I'm also a multiple sclerosis patient. Now, Stuart and I have collaborated for years now. Um, I've been fortunate enough to uh, join him for multiple MS presentations. And if you aren't familiar with MS Views and News, you absolutely have to check out their learning channel on YouTube because it's phenomenal. Now, Stuart shared with me a recent unfortunate set of events, which led to us uh, deciding to have this discussion. So, Stu, would you mind sharing with the folks kind of what happened recently? On or about July 1st or 2nd, I was leaving my home after a very heavy rainstorm, and I thought I would take a shortcut to my car and went through the grass. Well, that was my first mistake, and I surely don't want to do that again. So I went through the grass, and uh, my my foot got stuck like in a uh, very soft spot. My ankle rolled over. I felt a pop, and um, and it, it was so, so bad that I couldn't even take a step after that to get to my car. I literally had to crawl on my knees to get to the car, open up the car door, and pull myself up and get inside. It was just nuts. I now drove myself straight to the hospital. All right. I actually thought I broke, cracked, fractured, or did something to my ankle, which, um, you know, which was causing all this pain. So I went to the hospital and um, they did x-rays of my ankle and they didn't see anything. So they said, you just probably severely sprained your ankle. And uh, they wanted me to wear this, this boot that I brought, a brace that I had brought with me um, that I used to use for my ankle and my foot in the past for another condition. And um, and they said that that would be a lot better for me to wear than even an ACE bandage because it's it would really hold me in place. So I did that. So though two days later, um, I was still feeling agonizing pain and I called the foot ankle specialist that I had seen for years. And I went down to their office and I told them what happened and they took x-rays also of just my ankle and they claimed, uh, hey, the hospital's right. It seems to be a severe sprain. You're probably going to have to wear this brace for six weeks. And, you know, we'll see what happens after that. Well, two days later, I was getting on a plane and going to Alabama because we were doing a symposium there. And um, I got off the plane in Atlanta and I couldn't walk. Oh, my gosh, it was terrible. I, I tried getting to uh, the next uh, concourse. And instead, I had to stop the wheelchair pusher and tell them I need a wheelchair and get me to my gate. So they did. I got off. I had to go to Alabama. We did the symposium. I did not run around there at all. I had everybody bring me the questions because I couldn't walk. All right. Um, I then had to go to uh, Kentucky and then Tennessee. In Tennessee, we were doing a program. Again, it's a week later now. I still can't walk. Three days after getting back from Tennessee, I had to get on a plane and go to Europe. Oh, my gosh. My leg was killing me. I had this long flight. I had to keep asking for ice to be brought to me because I wanted to put ice on my on my foot and my leg because my leg, it was my leg actually though, where I was feeling more pain than my ankle. So it felt like, it felt like a freaking hacksaw was slicing away at my leg with every step or just even just sitting there at rest. Pain wound up being about that far, that far above the ankle, that far above the ankle. And, uh, and I couldn't understand why. And I said, geez, I wonder if I tore a tendon, you know, mm -hmm. um, that, that would be pretty awful. So though here I am in Europe, can't walk. Um, I'm in Norway. I have to use, uh, had to have somebody push me around in a wheelchair a lot um, in uh, the, the museums there and whatnot that I was doing. And people online have seen my pictures. So those all turned out well. But then I went to Amsterdam. And fortunately, ahead of time, I contacted National Multiple Sclerosis Society. And through their international contacts, they were able to line up and get me a, a, a scooter to use in Amsterdam. Long story short, I did my whole vacation. I came back and I had made an appointment to go see my my orthopedic surgeon that I had years ago, and they did an x-ray, and I came out of the uh, x-ray room. I'm heading back to the exam room. I'm limping in, and he says to me, uh, good news. There's nothing wrong with your ankle. I said, okay. He says, bad news. You have a broken leg. I said, you're full of shit. Excuse my language, but, you know, that's the way I said it to him, and, uh, and he says, no, I'm serious. He says, it's not just one break. It's two, so um, how the hell do I do that, and 
not only that, where it's broken, where it's fractured actually, and there, there's two fractures and they're only um, millimeters apart. I mean, smaller than even what I'm showing you there. It's millimeters apart and there's two cracks to the side of my leg. So this brings up some really, really important points. Uh, and in an earlier conversation, uh, Stuart, uh, we decided that it would be uh, useful for other people on the interwebs to hear about this. First of all, that's freaking horrible. And I'm really, really sorry that you languished with a broken leg uh, traipsing around the United States and Europe. What it calls into uh, discussion is the risk of thinning bones amongst people with multiple sclerosis. And so it turns out that people with MS, men and women, have an increased risk of thinning bones. There's two terms that I want to uh, call out. One is osteopenia, which is a doctor word for slightly thinned bones. And the other word is osteoporosis, which is more severe thinning bones. And independent of steroid use, men and women with MS over the age of 50 have an accelerated bone thinning, osteopenia and osteoporosis, and an increased risk of fracture. And so the reason we wanted to have this conversation is it's not well enough known. Uh, and so we're hopeful to bring awareness to this. Now, there are certain risk factors, uh, which I'm just going to rattle off. One of them is the presence of MS. The second is age. So each year you get a little older, the risk goes up some. Smoking uh, is a major risk factor. Uh, and Stuart doesn't smoke, but I'm just sharing this with people who are listening. But smoking is a, is a risk factor. And immobility uh, is a risk factor. Also, worsening neurological disability in MS. So as someone with MS has increased difficulty in walking and their EDSS, the scale of disability goes up, that correlates with worsening factors. Also an insidious one uh, that most people don't recognize is the use of PPIs. So stomach protectors uh, like uh, protonics. Chronic use can also uh, increase the risk of thinning bones. And so the point here is that there's a lot of risk for someone uh, with MS, particularly over the age of 50. And interestingly, it has nothing to do with steroid use. We used to think that, oh, it's because of all the steroids that people get. Not so. And so what can we take home from this? Uh, number one, we need to be aware of it. Uh, and we need doctors to be aware of it. We need people impacted by MS to be aware of it. And I think it's a best practice that all people, men and women over the age of 50 with MS, have a screening test called a DEXA bone density scan at least every couple of years after the age of 50. And if we identify that bones are thin, there's actually some things that we can do. Um, so I want to go over some of those with you. Uh, one of the things that we want to do is we want to make sure that you're getting adequate calcium. You know, so kids drink a lot of milk. Um, adults tend not to, and that's one source of calcium. There's a lot of other nutritional sources of calcium. Um, but if you're not able to take in enough nutrients with calcium, it's, it's relatively easy to take a calcium supplement. Now, one, one caveat is calcium can cause constipation, which is oftentimes a problem in MS. And so we have to balance that. But taking a calcium supplement uh, that you can pick up at the supermarket um, a couple times a day or at least once a day is a really good idea. Many people impacted by MS are encouraged to take vitamin D, even Floridians like you, Stuart, um, where there's a lot of sun. And vitamin D has a benefit of helping push calcium into your bones. So not just to slow down MS, but also to facilitate pushing calcium in the bones. So I'm using vitamin D3, all right? And I'm taking six to 8,000 IUs a day of D3. So therefore, does my need need to increase for using it? Probably not from the vitamin D standpoint, but we would want to make sure that you're getting adequate dietary calcium because what the D3 will do from a bone standpoint is it helps drive that calcium in the bones. But if we're calcium deficient, like if your diet doesn't have a lot of calcium in it, there's no calcium to push. Sure. So we want to make sure that the calcium is there. You're already doing the D3. And then interestingly, there's another vitamin called K2. Um, and you can find supplements that have D3 and K2. And so that further helps put, push calcium into the bones. Now, obviously, I'm not asking people to run out and take these without talking to their doctor, um, but these are things that are really important. Another thing that's really important is there are medicines. These are prescription medicines. Um, some people have heard of uh, Fosamax. Uh, that's a popular one. Or Prolia, 
That's a popular one. And these require prescriptions from doctors and some monitoring, but they are uh, medicines that literally force calcium into the bones. Um, and so if you uh, have MS and you're over 50, I, I want you to get a bone density scan. And if we identify osteopenia or osteoporosis, then we may benefit from taking some of those medicines. Lastly, the kind of exercise that you engage in is relevant. And so a lot of people with MS are encouraged to exercise. And swimming and yoga are awesome exercises, but they don't help reactive bone growth. Weightlifting, bearing weight, like squatting or something like that, and walking, pounding the ground, causes reactive bone growth. Um, and, and so that's one other tool that we want to bring to bear. Stuart, you're a superman of sorts, and I think you just proved it to everyone by, by traipsing around Europe with two fractures of your leg. It's our hope in sharing this with the viewers uh, that, that people can, can take away that if you have MS and you're over 50, we want to be thinking about bone health and we want to make sure that we're getting a bone density test and that we want to supplement calcium, vitamin D, K2, and stomp the ground. And, you know, before we jump offline, tell us where we can learn more about MS Visa News, because it's one of the most amazing MS advocacy organizations out there. Thank you very much. So people can go to www dot msvn.org or you can find us on facebook uh, you can find us on other social medias instagram uh we're on oh my gosh i'm going to say twitter even though i'm not allowed to say that anymore you yes. can find us on x or twitter however you want to call it we're on linkedin we do educational programs throughout the united states and if you want to find out more about that just go to our website and and see what we've got going on we've got a tremendous amount of things happening still through the end of the year and you could always find Dr. Boster in our YouTube channel because he's done plenty of things with us. And it goes back to the days uh, 10 years ago, almost that I first met him. Great. I think I, I think I had a little more hair back then. Although, Me too. <laughs> well, Stuart, <laughs> as always, thank you very much uh, for educating. Uh, thanks for joining me here. And down in the description below, we'll have all the links uh, to where people can learn more about MSVs and news. And good luck with your healing process. Thank you. You too.